Hello, this is the uh, course intro video for Math 1342 Statistics with Professor Smalley. And let's see how we can help navigate your way through the course to make things easier for you to understand. Uh, if you are in an online section, you definitely want to watch this video. Everybody should watch it. If you're in a face-to-face -face class, you'll see this stuff explained on the first day. But for someone that misses the first day, then you would want to also watch this video. All right, here we go. Uh, we need to log in the D2L. You can do it a couple different ways. If you go into secure login, I think that takes you through My Lone Star. But if you really don't need to access My Lone Star at this point in time, you go down here to the alternate login, which takes you just straight to D2L. And let's see, let me find, I'm going to do it for the uh, 6301 section in fall 2024. And let's see, I'll put it in student view. I tend to use these videos more than once, so as long as I haven't directly changed any policies, you know, someone, for example, in the spring course, this video will still apply if nothing has changed structure-wise other than calendar dates. Okay, let's start over here on the content. First thing, we're going to take a look at the syllabus, but I'm not going to bring the syllabus up right now because I need. To, I realized uh, when I started making this video before that I needed to put something in the syllabus or kind of hide something there. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to bring it up from the uh, document file, but it's going to be, and I'll tell you what the difference will be, but it'll be correct when it's posted. Um, all right, so let's see what we got here. Okay, we can skip all the name, rank, and serial number stuff here. If you need to contact me, obviously email, but I, if you want to meet with me, we can set up a, a meeting online. There are no uh, uh, mandatory online. Sometimes I'll schedule uh, a time or an, an open hour or so, but that might you know, not always be convenient for everyone. So, but, but no meetings are mandatory. That's the good news. So, <clears throat> all right, yada yada yada. Here, let's see. Da -da -da -da. All right. So this is uh, we we do have my stat lab homework in this course, and you will need a, a, a code. You don't need the physical textbook, as I mentioned right here, because there'll be a, a, an e-text version with the my Stat Lab course. Um, now you can get a code like from a bookstore or whatever, but I I believe it's cheaper if you just go online to the, the Pearson, you know, My Math Lab, My Stat Lab, sign up. I guess maybe through Pearson.com, but you can probably look at. Uh, mymathlab.com, but just to sign up for a course. So the reason I, I it, I'm doing this, you know, I didn't bring up the syllabus because when I bring, when I post that syllabus that you'll open, there'll be five numbers right here. And I came, I, I thought about this, and then I decided, you know what, I better uh, other courses this wouldn't weren't using this software wouldn't matter. But I said, let me, I don't want to put that code there in the video. Because I don't want anyone from a different course using that ID. In other words, this is only for one specific section. So that way I leave it like this. And then when you, you look at your syllabus, you watch the video, there's nothing there. So there's no way you can sign up for the wrong course. Because that way it'll be the, the, on your syllabus. So this is the reason why I'm doing it this way. For whatever the course, uh, for the, the section 6301, uh, the syllabus will have your course ID, but for my face-to-face -face one, it's going to be a different course ID. The course itself is going to be the same. Everything's going to be the same once you get into it, but I don't want them to be combined because obviously I want them separated for two different classes, so when I'm compiling the homework grades, I don't have to look at one and go, oh, which class are they in, you know, the face-to-face -face or the online, so. All right, let's see. 
Let's, okay, I'm not going to read all this. Official day of record, I'll talk about that here in a minute. 9924, that's important. And this, the withdrawal is only if you wanted to withdraw from the course, but that's the official date. You would have to do that by 11-11-24. Rest of this, I'm not going to read through this. Anti-racism, that's tremendous, that's wonderful. Uh, okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, I see a typo. This, I didn't put this in there. I don't think it's chat. <laughs> no, <laughs> not chat, chat. All right. All right, I'm not going to worry about editing any other grammar stuff in there. Well, other than I see probably an extra space here, but all right, anyway. All right, blah, 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 conflict, uh, conflict resolution. I'm a full-time instructor, so the department chair, you can contact her if you want to. She's just a colleague, but uh, if there's any issues, you would actually go to the, the, the bottom one is my technical boss there. Hopefully that won't be necessary, uh, but just letting you know sort of the hierarchy there or whatever for part-time instructors, the department chair is for sure the person they go to first because the department chair is technically the supervisor of the adjuncts. But my supervisor is the dean. Okay, just so I'll let you know. Now, this is important. Going back to this ODR, verifying the students in the course for proper state reporting and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'll show you this in a minute. There's a real simple assignment in D2L. You answer two questions, and there are already only one answer choice you can pick. It's not a matter of being right or wrong, but there's only one choice, so the answer is going to be right. So you have to do that to verify your participation in the course. They no longer allow us to, to do it by, you used to could do it if you just look and see if anyone logged into D2L, you would consider that being in the course. That's not good enough. And then we don't want to necessarily wait for any kind of assignments to be actually completed. That's, that's not necessary, you know, graded assignments. We don't have to wait for that either. But by doing this, if someone does this, they are verifying their participation in the course. If you don't do that by the date 9-9, I shown above there as the ODR, uh, you will be dropped from the course and they won't likely bring you back. You can ask, but I mean, I, you could try to get back. But they, they're getting pretty, pretty stiff about that. So after you watch this video, I would strongly go right in there and do that. It'll take about 15 seconds, probably not even that long. And um, then do it and you're done with it and you verify your participation. Now, after that's done, we'll assume ever, hopefully everybody does it and don't have to drop anybody. I certainly don't want to drop anybody, but I have to if you don't do this. Now, the, the latter drop date, 11-11, the withdrawal date, that is totally your responsibility. In other words, it, it, let's say if you do the ODR verification and then just kind of you don't do anything in the course, you're not doing anything, you're not doing any homework, you're not doing any exams, and you go, well, he'll just drop me at some point or whatever before that deadline. That is not true. If you make it through the ODR and then you decide you want to drop, that is totally on you. I am not dropping anybody for any reason after the ODR date. Okay, you can ask me about that if you have any questions. Uh, the Respondus Lockdown Browser is, is, is uh, what we use, can use for exam proctoring right now. So we don't really have a good proctoring setup going on. Not sure if I'm going to use it or not, but I have that in the syllabus, which enables me the right to use it. So I can choose not to use it, though. Um, but there's nothing else involving any other kind of proctoring. It's that or nothing. All right, let's see how we get a grade in this class. That might be helpful. So we're going to have a My Stat Lab homework average. We're going to have three exams and then an optional final exam. So what this means is that uh, uh, if you take you know, exam one, exam two, exam three, and with your homework average, since th those exams are going to cover everything, there's no other, in other words, there's no extra material. There's extra material, I always like to have a final exam that counts because that way you, you should be tested on any extra material. But everything is contained in the course in the first three exams. And if you take those three exams, and with your homework average, and you're happy with what you have, you're done for the course. That's it. The optional final exam, keyword being optional, you may take it to uh, try to replace 
a, a previous exam score. Maybe you had a bad day on one of the three exams. You may take that exam. Now, there's no risk in taking that exam in the sense that it, it can replace your, it will replace your lowest one if it's higher. But if it's not, then it doesn't count. So, for example, let's say, you know, your exam scores were, I don't know, 80, 85, and 90, and it's made up three of them, and you take the optional final and you make a 75, it will not count because it did not beat one of the other three. So it's not, sometimes people wonder about that. Does that mean if you take that, does it count, automatically count? No. It, it, only, it can only help you, it may not help you, but it can only help you. It cannot hurt you, though, is what I'm getting at. It cannot make your grade any worse. Now, obviously, if you miss an exam or something, then you have to take it. But you, otherwise, I would suggest taking all the exams, and then you can decide if you want to do it for uh, potentially replacing a low score. But yes, it's mandatory if you miss an exam. So basically, they're all 25%. So you see, so it's the best three, exam one, exam two, exam three, the optional final. Notice that the MyStatLab homework average is down here in its own row, meaning that counts automatically. You cannot blow off the homework and you cannot say can I just use exam one, exam two, exam three and the optional final as my grade. No. You cannot do that. The my stat lab homework average is mandatory. Okay. Maybe I should say well I said it verbally but I'd, it's, it is so it is mandatory. Um could put mandatory in there, kind of, just to make it a little more official. All right. Yes. Yeah, so make sure, in case you're not sure, please feel free to ask. But that counts automatically. All right. Letter grade. Here's sort of a outline of kind of the the topics, and you'll see that when we go back to uh, it's it's organized pretty well and. Uh, in the course content in D2L, but they want us to also put this on syllabus. And I said, okay, no problem. Now we'll go on to Pearson and look at the homework here in a minute. But you see I have a, a exam homework due, but it's going to be reopened. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Well, you'll, you'll see it when I scroll down here. Here are the dates, exam one, available 926 to 930. That means you just take it at any time in your convenience during that window of time and whenever you feel like it. And, and you see, I have the exam, I'll probably make a separate announcement in D12, but the exam passwords are right here. So you don't have to memorize them right now, but if you can remember, because usually somebody will always be one or two people right for it. Uh, so I, I don't know what the password is. Uh, you don't have to remember what they are, but if you just can kind of remember that they're here, or even, usually that happens if I send an announcement and then, and then it gets, and there's other announcements after it and they forgot that was made. But I'll try to remember to also include this in an announcement just so. But yeah, they'll be here. And then there's the next exam date right here. See, each of the homework has due dates, but they're going to be reopened. And the purpose, the point is I stop them because I want you to move ahead with the new material, but then that gives you an opportunity to go back later in the course. I don't want you, you know, if we're studying the stuff for exam two, it's better for your skills if you're practicing exam two homework and you can always go back. But the idea is, you know, you have the, the luxury of going back, but you don't want to blow it all off and force a lot of work on yourself later in the semester. You know, you want to try to get as much done as you can as we go. Because then you just end up, you know, with, you have other classes, I'm sure. You know, that's, that's going to make your life miserable. So here's exam two password. Exam two is available 1031 to 11-4. And there's the due date for homework four is 11, 11 to, exam two homeworks due 11 four. And... I did not put, let me, uh, let me bring this up. I'll probably repost the syllabus. I'll just do it right here so you can see it on the spreadsheet. I'll just put uh, exam, all homework, uh, 
reo I'll say reopens on I don't say well oh, let's say maybe eleven eighteen. I may make it earlier once the course gets going, but yeah, all right, so I guess I should fix the syllabus here before I post it in D2L again. And that means that's so that means now the exam three homework, since it's so you know near the end of the semester, it just stays open from the deadline. It will not close and reopen like the other words, ones that will just stay. So then they're all going to be open back up. Everything's open, and they all have you see down here in the red, that's when they're all due on 12 14. So the, the exam three does not close and reopen. So then here's your exam three due date, uh, to range 12 5 to 12 9. Uh, there's exam three password and here's the dates for the optional final it's it's all it's open during final exam week there's that password and then here's the message saying all homework will be due on 12 14 okay so I will repost the syllabus well syllabus got to be reposted anyway because it's got to have the correct uh, course ID for your course so is that everything of importance really on the syllabus yeah okay rest of the I do not need to talk about that that'll be in the syllabus but I don't need to waste your time by reading that to you go back to the course uh, let's talk about let's see this shows you how to do it let me get me go to the exams first here and then I'll come back to so the, uh, the, the important activities, well, grades is just where you see your grades. That's yeah, that's important, obviously, but the things that you're doing for studying purposes are under content right here. And uh, course activities. Course activities. Quizzes. So your exams are all here. But then the homework, you know, some instructors obviously do their exams in the my math lab. That's fine. But mine are just done here. Uh, they're in D2L, so you'll take them. And then you, uh, they, they all have pretty generous time limits. I say about three hours, something like that. When I, when I post the passwords, I'll probably also post the time limits. Uh, but even with, if I use Lockdown Browser, you, you can still use you know your materials you can still look on uh, you know look up stuff and you know, while, you know while you're taking the test that's fine you can have access to the course content if I decide to use lockdown browser the only thing I'd really be looking for is that you know someone is not uh, sitting next to you while you do it but I don't care as far as you know resources that you're using that aren't other human beings so you'd be you have access to all the materials. Yeah, here's that ODR assignment, and I'll just do this right now. So the way you do this, because oh, the exam is going to be a password, so you click in there and then um, uh, you type in the password, and then you go. It'll tell you the time limit. But you know, one thing I want to mention though. Uh, for exams, and you probably would have figured this out, but you know it's all done in one setting. Now, the My Stat Lab homework, you go in and work a few problems in an assignment, log out, come back in, work more. You can do it in parts, but all the exams are done in one sitting. So make sure you're you're ready to do it all right there on the spot. ODR verification assignment. Watch this. This one doesn't have a. All right, why does this not have, okay, I created this and I don't know what, what happened here. I'm going to have to figure out why that doesn't work. Uh, okay, darn it. Well, let me see if I can get back in here as an instructor and maybe I can see it and then, then figure out how to fix it for you. Because I know I can like edit it and do stuff, whatever, from here, but I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I just kind of want to show it to you at least anyway. And then, so you go on there and click the start button. Uh, oh, that's why I can't see it. I don't have it opened up until uh, when I'm, rec I'm recording this video on the 25th. So that's why it's not available yet. 
but but here, yeah, it's two questions. And, and when you look at them, there's only one answer choice is yes. Are you taking a math class this semester? You bubble yes. Is Richard Small an instructor? You bubble it yes. And that's it. Submit. Done. You've completed it. You've verified your participation for the course. It's that easy. And that's all you do. I have a 60-minute time limit. I don't think, well, that takes you 60 minutes. That's going to be, <laughs> ooh, okay, never mind. All right, that's why it wasn't, okay, it had me paranoid. That's why it wasn't available. I can go back to student mode here. So that's how you do it. That's it for here, the exams. There's that, these three, optional final. And he shows you the dates for all of them here, just like I had in that little, in the syllabus and that calendar. The dates are right here also. So you never really have to go back and look at that syllabus. They just, they just wanted us to put them on the syllabus. And I said, okay. But they're right here. And just like your due dates and the uh, uh, homework will be in uh, my stat lab. Of course, obviously, they'll change in November when they all get reopened. Anyway, so let's see. Back to content. I think everything's pretty straightforward here. We've got lecture notes, and they are grouped by exam, just like I have on that syllabus calendar. There you see, so hey, there's no, there's no big mystery here. You might go, hey, what's going to be exactly on exam one? Well, look at this. It's all here in this folder. Everything's for each exam is, is going to be. There's no mystery. There's no, look at that. And there's the ones for exam three. I have lecture videos, which obviously I highly recommend. They're also a group by exam. Exam one, exam two, we also have exam reviews that you can use. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, don't worry, that's a summer 23. There's no need to change that content. Yeah, you definitely want to go through these. I mean, obviously the, the the, the homework is good. The online homework is good. Don't get me wrong. But but don't don't just use that alone. I would use this as a study guide. And the uh, I'll look at the exams and let you know that when I post the passwords, they're either like 20 or 25 problems. Because that's usually what people will ask is how many how many are in each, each one. You know, I'll, I'll let you know. But they're, they're not. A, so don't freak out if one of these exam reviews tend to have a lot more problems than they're on that on the test. So that's that's. But that's all reasonable. Uh, I'll click on this one just to see how many there are. And I also have solutions. Um, I don't have video solutions to these for this course, but I have written solutions. Yeah, solution means written. There's probably an answer key attached to this, but written is to see how I, I worked it out. But anything you're not sure about, I'll be happy to contact me. I'll be happy to help you. All right. Yeah, I mentioned the exams will not contain it, but I'll tell you exactly how many problems there are in, a, in an announcement. Yeah, so this has 52, no problem. Exam will be nowhere close to that. But, you know, like, I think it's not uncommon for, especially like a math course, you know, type of review, not uncommon for an instructor to put way more problems on there because, you know, I guess the philosophy of the the more practice, the better is always good, but these are not graded assignments, so no one is collecting these or you're not submitting these. And uh, so it's just up to you how many you want to do, but obviously the more you can do, the better. The uh, charts and Excel files, these, this will be more relevant as you get closer, especially some of these Excel spreadsheets are really helpful, but that's stuff we don't come up with just toward the end of the semester, so you really won't be using a lot of these. Now, I might be adding a couple other things in here, like the, uh, the distribution table for two dice, rolling two dice. So you might see other things added to this. So just check in there. You know, you can look every once in a while. Anything like charts and images and stuff, so that's where that is, but not really that relevant right now. Uh, Reviewing exam, it just shows you, I, I, yeah, the entering, you know, the quiz or thing, you just click on start, you do it, you finish. Make sure, you know, on a test that, that it shows check marks next to every question that you, you know, you know obviously if, if you don't know something, please guess, but, you know, don't leave anything blank. Make sure everything's there, you hit submit. Now, the reviewing the exam submissions, this file right here, the way you do this is 
when you uh, take a, an exam, go back over to here. You click on this, you click on the blue, and that's how you get it started, that sort of thing. This won't be ready because it's not open. You click on it, you do it, then submit. But then to look at your results, it'll show you the score, and it'll put the score in the grade book, but to actually look at your results, I don't know if I have these things automatically done, but I'll, I'll remind me if I don't. I usually wait a couple of days so after the test is over just in case there's any kind of technical difficulty or something where I have to adjust the exam day, like if D2L went down or something on that last day. But I have to set a date for these to become viewable for you. And and so let me know if, if I forget. But the way you do it, though, is you don't, uh, you don't click on the blue again. The clicking on the blue does nothing. That's only for taking the exam. To do it, you click on the arrow next to it. And you click on, I'm not going to do it right now, but you click on submissions. And that's, that's, how, that's how you do it. That's how you view it. Um, and this should be it's just a PDF file that should show you that. There, you see that right there? Drop down arrow, submissions. But, but if that doesn't work, that probably means that I have not opened it for view. Then you can send me an email and let me know, hey, you know, oh, is it ready to, can we... Can we set it to view now? And yeah, that, that'd be the reason. But this, assuming the dates right, right, uh, the date right, then, and then yeah, then you pick on your attempt right there. Then you can see. So if you made a ninety and you missed a couple and you wanted to see which ones you missed, uh, you won't be able to do it right when you take the test. But you will be able to do it a couple days after the ex end of the exam period. Not so if you take the test at the beginning of the exam period, we have to wait until the exam period's over. All right, so the last thing I think I'll say here is, we don't have to worry about this now, is calculating the homework average. Um, there, were, there were 24 homework assignments, and uh, I will be delete, uh, deleting, excuse me, dropping the lowest six, so the best 18 count. Now, the, in, in the... Uh, Pearson thing, I, it won't let you drop six, it'll only let you drop five, and, and it does the average thing kind of weird, so if I did it correctly, I, I, I tried to set it up where you can't even, you can see your individual scores, but not your average, because I don't want you to trust what that says, I created a little Excel file here that shows you how to do it uh, uh, in Excel yourself, but I wouldn't worry about that now, there's no point in doing it now, because uh, you need to get more scores. Because what's hey, you make a hundred on the first one, and then by the time you know if you do if you follow that process, you've got one hundred, and the rest are zeros because you haven't done anything yet. Your average will be like five point something percent out of eighteen assignments. So obviously that's not very helpful. But as you get more scores, it's it, at, at later in the semester, and then as you're as you're working on them and you're changing them. Uh, you, you can go in there and do it. You don't, you don't have to, every time you change your homework score, you don't have to go through that process. It's strictly your choice how often you want to do it to see what your homework average is. But that's exactly the way that I will be calculating your homework average at the end. So it just shows you enter the scores, how to sort them, and how to average them. But yeah, you don't have to worry about that, right? I mean, you can watch it now if you want to, but uh, you want to, it, that'll be important later on. So the idea is if you're dropping six of them, you kind of, you know, toward the end, you know, if you've got, let's say, a couple of assignments, if you have like a couple of 75s and a 50 because you hadn't finished yet or whatever, this, that, and the other, you kind of want to push the higher scores up a little bit because the idea is dropping, you know, the lowest one. So you want to push towards getting as many higher scores. They don't have to all be hundreds, but you want your 18 highest scores. If they're all hundreds, then you have 100 average, but... Uh, so you kind of, it's better to have, you know, a couple of hundreds and a 20 than it is to have like three seventies or whatever. So, cause you, you know, you drop the one 20 if it's one of the six drops. So, okay. I think that pretty much covers everything for this video. So hope we have a wonderful semester in math 1342. Thank you.